Welcome to the sixth video of our series, where we will continue with our rule-based design analysis. In this video, we will create a layered soil profile based on the TVF files that we have prepared in the previous video, and then proceed with the analysis. Our goal is to compare the results between the rule-based 1D analysis and the 3D finite element model. Let's start by advancing directly to the analysis mode. In the Soil Reaction Curves tab, we press the Import button and then navigate to the rule-based clay and rule-based sand DVF files. We select the files and then press Open. In the Soil Layers tab, we create multiple layers, each corresponding to the material found in situ. In this case, we have five layers of alternating materials of stiff clay and dense sand. So we go ahead and assign each DVF file to each corresponding layer. In the Monopile Geometry and Structural Properties, we will define the geometry and material parameters of the final design. For that, we assumed a monopile height of 56 meters, an embedded length of 21.5 meters, and an outer diameter of 7 meters. In the Thickness Variation section, we input the thickness segments of the final design. In this case, a simple pattern is assumed with segments that have a variable thickness with depth. Finally, in Workload, we input the resultant horizontal load and moment. In this example, a single load case is considered, corresponding to a horizontal load of 10 mega newtons applied at the elevation of 56 meters. After we have finished with the definition of the parameters, we can click on the Calculate button to start the 1D analysis. As you can see, the 1D calculation takes only a few seconds. Once the 1D calculation is completed, a green checkmark appears to indicate a successful calculation. With the calculation, the program generates parameterized and normalized soil reaction curves for intervals of half a meter. It also generates the shaft and base variation functions, based on the imported DVF files. Double-clicking one of these graphs opens a separate window that displays a larger version of the graph. If we click on the Table tab, we can find all the values generated from the chart. Here we can right-click on these values to extract them by copying or saving them in a separate file for post-processing purposes. Now we can check the results of the 1D analysis in the Results tab. Here we can see the results for the monopile and the soil. The monopile results include the lateral reaction force versus lateral displacement, the bending moment versus monopile rotation, and the monopile deflection, rotation, bending moment, and shear force over depth. Clicking on the Table tab gives us access to the data from the graphs, which we can copy or save for post-processing. Once we have run the 1D analysis, we can generate our 3D design verification model by pressing the Generate button. Fluxes will automatically generate the soil layers and sub-layers, as specified in the Soil Layer tab and the Soil Reaction Curves files. It will also generate the structure based on the settings of the monopile geometry and the pile segments defined in the thickness variation. When we press the Calculate button, Fluxys will calculate all three phases and extract the raw soil reaction curves and the data displayed in the results mode. The 3D Design Verification module makes use of Plaxis 3D to generate and run a 3D model that replicates the conditions of the U1D analysis. Both models are generated using the same input, which includes soil layers and material parameters of each sub-layer, monopile geometry including thickness variation per segment, structural properties and workload. This enables the comparison of the results between the 3D model and the U1D model. The next step is to compare and verify our results and to do that we proceed to the results mode and then select the design verification checkbox. We can now compare the results of the 1D and the selected 3D model by inspecting the horizontal force to lateral displacement graph at Madline. In the next video we will repeat our design, this time running a numerical based analysis and we will compare the results between the two methods.